we're Randy and Julie Floyd, and uh, we've been married for 14 years. 14 years. 14 years, and uh, a lot of it's been good, and uh, some of it's been pretty trying. And uh, I would say the last two years have been good. Uh, the previous three to that were probably the most trying of our marriage, for, for, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I got laid off and it was the first time I'd ever been laid off in my life uh, and it hit me pretty hard because I'd had a pretty good career up to that point and uh, wasn't quite sure where the future was going to take us from there but uh, we were real fortunate and I found another job pretty quickly and uh, started working at that job at the beginning of 2009 and then at the end of 2009 I got laid off again and uh, I would say that that second layoff hit me harder than the first one. Definitely. Uh, it was just um, I didn't think I could stomach two of those in a row. Mm -mm. Then on September 9th, 2010, things changed for us forever, really. And we both looked at each other at the same time and said, we have to leave and we have to leave right yeah. now. In the amount of time that we went out to the car and I turned back around, the house was already engulfed in water. He said, Randy, where are you? And he started asking me, was everyone with me? And I said, well, yes. And he said, well, the fire department is looking for you. The firemen had to park at the main road and swim about a half mile in to get our neighbors. Um, when they did that, they saw my mom's car hanging over a cliff and the tail of Randy's truck sticking up out of the creek. An enormous wall of water crested. Like a tsunami wave. Yeah, almost like a tsunami wave had come through our property. These firemen just jumped in this raging flood water and swam the creek thinking we were trapped in the vehicles and then when they saw my mom's keys in her car they thought um, they were looking for bodies at that point that we were trying to get out and got swept away. I probably felt the most hopeless was when we got back to the property and everything was gone and I mean when I say it was gone the the, the house was completely blown apart. Um, it was, the carpet was swept away down to the, to the, uh, to the pavement. Um, the, the rooms were cleaned out. Uh, we never found any of our furniture. It was apparently got up on top of the waves and, and, and rode off down to Lake Granger somewhere. <laughs> so uh, at that moment, I just, I didn't, couldn't even process it. Yeah. And I think after, after the two layoffs and then, and then that moment, I probably felt as low as I've ever felt in my life. Well, we, and we got back to the property the next day. Um, we. The, we lived, like I said, we lived on a dry creek, and when you say it's a dry creek, I mean it's dry it's because dry. there's no water in it. <laughs> and and we got back, and the, and the creek was dry. almost dry again. <laughs> I mean, it was almost incredible to, to you couldn't even fathom what had happened. Even wet. Yeah, I mean the, the the house was just cleaned out, and um, we walked out to, I mean, it left a huge debris field, almost like a ship had gone down. I felt hopeless, but at the same time, I felt, I don't know, grateful, mm -hmm. because. When we looked around, everything was gone, but the children and Julie and Grandma were all safe, and we were okay. I had no idea where we were going to go from here, though. I had absolutely no idea. Um, and we were still in our clothes from the night before. We were still soaking wet. Yeah, so our we, kids were still in their pajamas. Um, yeah, we just we just picked up and, and left with what we had on our back, and so uh, we had absolutely nothing at that point. And um, again, after having been laid off, we didn't have a lot of resources to rely upon either. And that's when things started happening. I mean... We went to Kohl's, because <laughs> that was the closest store that was open at, at that time of morning. Um, and I'm, you know, we're just picking out anything that we can find to just put on um, to have a change of clothes. And a friend from church just showed up showed up and handed us some money, took our wet clothes um, to, to go wash them. But it was amazing just to, to watch people step up and the things that, that they did for us without us even being asked. We had a family at our church 
contact us about coming to live with them. And we didn't even know this particular family. Uh, and they uh, pursued us, I would say, relentlessly for several days, just continually um, calling, calling messages, yeah, calling. And then finally uh, we accepted and we stayed with them for three months. Three months. I mean, it was just, you know, we, we think about um, the flood and it's so hard to, to explain when you come back and, and you don't find um, anything that belonged to you. But yet when we would walk, um, sometimes up to a mile or two away from the property, uh, we would find crosses. We would find angels. Um, we would find anything that we had that had scripture on it. All of our children had a cross um, tied to their bed that they received from their um, child dedication. And little by little we would find those. And I remember one time it had been about four months after the flood and I was walking past an area that we had walked many times and all of a sudden I could see it sticking up out of the ground. And so in the worst of times, it was very evident. God was with us. He was absolutely he, with us. He carried us um, out. When we went, when you went into our living room, um, everything was gone. I mean, all the furniture. Uh, I had the a wait, walls. <laughs> the walls, everything was, was completely gone. And um, like I said, we never found any of the furniture. But sitting right there on the floor um, was this little piece of fiberboard um, that I had purchased at a, uh, I guess a gift shop a couple of years before and it had my favorite verse on it uh, from, from Joshua which said, as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. And that was, I mean that should have been the first thing to go. And But there it was. And it was almost like God was reminding us the whole time that He was there with us and that uh, He was going to take care of us and He was going to lead us through. And it wasn't an overnight process for, for sure. It took us a long, long time to recover. But every single time there was a need, there was, there was a way that it was being met. And we truly learned to live day by day. And I think that for me, the, the corner really turned when one day I went to the property and I was actually out there all by myself. And I, I didn't like to go, to go back. And uh, I was in the house and uh, the phone rang. And uh, it, it, was, um, it was Keith. And he was a pastor in uh, Houston at the time. And uh, he had heard about it and uh, he was calling. He said that he just wanted to, to pray with me. And I got down on my knees um, and Keith prayed over me, over the telephone. And at that moment, I think I turned a personal corner. And I really believed that um, God was going to not only take care of us, but He was going to give us a bright, bright future. And I think He has. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've been fortunate to find a couple of really good jobs since then. And um, we've purchased a new home. Uh, it's not very far from, from where we used to live. We're still a little close, closer to a creek <laughs> than we would pro probably both like to be. <laughs> but uh, so, so far we're okay.